虚実を切り裂いて想定の青いで飛び立った特殊 Hey everyone, so I saw My Hero Academia, Heroes Rising. First of all, I have to give a big shout out to my girlfriend Leanne for getting me into this show. I've always compared it to Harry Potter meets X-Men. There are so many colorful characters and their quirks, the cast is as big as Game of Thrones. The first feature length film that came out, which was Two Heroes, that was absolutely impressive, very spectacular, I love the animation and the action. A lot of people ask, do I need to watch the show or the movie to understand this one? I'd say yes, you have to get familiar with the characters, otherwise it's kind of like watching the Avengers Infinity War and Endgame without watching the previous solo films. Do you have to catch up with season 4 to understand this movie?、Um, I don't think you have to. The movie doesn't necessarily set up a clairvoyant timeline in which this falls into place with season 4. You do have to be caught up with season 3 because they do explain a few things that I guess are... Important. <laughs> a lot of the results with the characters and what happens in the story doesn't necessarily affect the canon of the show, so I think you're pretty good to go and just enjoy this for what it is. I need to geek out for a moment. The Black Ranger from the original Power Rangers played the voice of the main villain, Nine. And yes, I'm referring to the English dub. The new villain was just overpowering, kind of reminded me of All for One.、Um, I really wish they did some kind of a more deeper connection with this villain in that one, but I loved his,、uh, his whole posse, Chimera, that big wolf guy that just, I don't know, kind of reminded me of an old man Logan, just crazier on steroids. And then there's that mummy dude who turns people to his personal dolls, and that girl Slice. I don't know, she kind of reminded me of that one girl with the from X Men 2. Now, my only issue about this movie, and I know it's a movie of a show because there's many different villains in this universe, is that these villains that we were focused on didn't have too much of a character development or origin story to really back up so much、uh, to really feel for them. They were pretty damn cool and all their quirks and everything, and they got a few flashbacks, but I mean, I'm still rooting for the heroes here. Speaking of the heroes, I'm actually happy that we just focused on the students. They had no backup, no All Might to help them out, and it really just added to the suspense. Isolated on an island with no professional supervision, just these students and the responsibility of the town. They even put the children in danger, man. Now, I know that Midoriya is the main character and he's more of the focus in his entire class, but Bakugo definitely stole the show. He really got to shine and just show off his quirk just 100%. He was just very cocky and went all out on his battles. I wanted more out of Todoroki, but I mean, he was facing the big bad wolf. That guy was just way too OP. Tokoyami's battle scene in the cave. My god, having him and Dark Shadow just take on that Slice Girl. Absolutely amazing. And overall, the entire class got to really shine and show off all their quirks and have equal screen time just as much as all the main characters. The three big action sequences in this movie were so epic, they didn't leave anybody out on this one except for All Might. And to have an entire crowd in my theater to react the same way I got a reaction out of in Avengers Endgame was just so phenomenal. I thought Shigaraki lingering in the background in this movie was kind of unnecessary. Although, with that ending, I'm kind of curious to see if it does affect the canon in the show. This was a great sequel slash TV show movie to be put on the big screen. I cannot wait if they ever do a third one. And I highly advise those who do get weepy during the emotional parts of the show bring the tissues for this one.